This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. Ah, uh, yes, food, glorious food, and what it can do for us or to us. Our guest today from Integrative Naturopathic Medical Center in Vancouver, naturopathic physician Dr. Katie Leah, along with Kirsten McEwen, a registered holistic nutritionist, Integrative Naturopathic Medical Center. It's a long-standing holistic center and offers leading-edge and effective therapies in tune with the needs of today's baby boomers. Okay. Katie and Kirsten, and, and you can decide who wants to start this. And we'll do this. Will be a shortened version of what would happen if I was coming in to, to see you uh, and, and talk about the cleanse, okay, or the detoxification. What do you need to know from me? Well, there's there's some very basic, you know, information. Um, you know, what are your what are your general health goals right now? You know, is this something that you're just doing to improve energy, or are you trying to lose weight? Um, you know, is is your immune system a part of this problem? So, as a part of the initial process, we want to know what's important to you and where are you starting from. Um, so that usually is the first conversation that we have. Okay, so I'm uh, uh, as we pointed out, I'm not 50 anymore. Uh, and go ahead, just uh, and I'll tell you what I'll give you some answers as to what to what I eat, what I do, and so on. We'll uh, I'll, I'll lay it out on the line. Yeah. Well, what I would typically start out by doing is just asking someone to run me through kind of an average day, what that looks like for them diet wise. Okay. If so there's such a thing. Well, the <laughs> <laughs> some people can answer this question really easily, and other people are like scratching their head. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on, on on how you watch what we 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 try for variety in our household. So uh, one day it may be uh, shakes with um, a bit of uh, natural yogurt, uh, no sugar, no fat, um, uh, fresh berries or fresh frozen, um, some uh, protein powder, uh, maybe a little bit of cheese curds. Uh, and then we might use almond milk. We try to stay away from dairy. We do a shake, and, and, and then we go and work out um, once or twice a week, maybe an egg on, on toast. We, we try to avoid bread. How am I doing? So far, so Pretty good. good so okay. far. <laughs> Lunch is often uh, an issue for us because uh, we don't want to eat too late, so it's what you eat in the middle of the day. But sometimes if you've eaten that proper breakfast, you're not as hungry. Is there... Is there uh, a, a difference? Is there a different psychology in what I should be taking or we should be taking in, uh, say, in that midday meal, that uh, lunchtime meal? Well, for a lot of people, they skip lunch, especially like if work is busy for them or they were kind of out and about on the go running around errands. So my goal is for always for people to just make sure they are eating lunch to begin with um, and then trying to have a bigger lunch, um, a meal midday rather than dinner time, as you kind of are trying to do. Well, I'm doing good so far, but I think sometimes when we get to the evening meal, we're traditionalists. Mm -hmm. You know, it might mm -hmm. be, uh, and while we've tried to stay away from processed meats, uh, you know, it's chicken, it's pork, it's beef. Um, you know, sometimes just a just just a just a salad. Uh, is there is there a guideline as to how much you should eat at, at dinner? I've heard the old saying, like, is it? Uh, eat breakfast like a, a prince and uh, something less and then a popper eat like a popper for uh, for, for your main dinner at, at night but that's not how we live in North America that's not how we do things um, where am I going wrong there um, again I think it depends from person to person but I think typically um, if we're talking you know blood sugar management weight loss that kind of thing eating your calories more spread out throughout the day is a better option and then having a bit more of a late dinner. If you think of food as fuel and say dinner time um, is at seven o'clock and you're kind of in for the night and you're winding down for the evening, you don't need as much fuel to do something like that than you do to get through your day, whatever that looks like for you. So typically that's a better way to sort of sort your calories out throughout the day. Okay. What are the dangers of not eating, say, that midday meal? Very oh, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> very, very dangerous. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it, a lot of people think that skipping meals, you know, it, that it doesn't have the, a, a particularly strong effect on their body. But some of the things that we see are, you know, swings in blood sugar, you know, from high to low. Uh, we certainly see people have, you know, changes in their cravings. So skipping meals is, is really not, not ideal. Um, 
you know, it's something that, you know, sort of keeps your metabolism moving throughout the day. So making sure that you're getting, you know, your three meals in, maybe with a couple of snacks is really important. And water. And water. water. <laughs> lots and lots, lots of and water. Lots and lots of water. <laughs> okay, so we've been eating healthier. Uh, for the most part, I think I'm doing okay. Um, but at some point, I'm still like, feel sluggish. What is it? Uh, feel like a, a bag of rocks. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sinking. And so I've come to you. How are you going to know if, or more appropriately, when I need a cleanse? Well, sometimes someone will come and see me and they'll say, Kirsten, I want to do a cleanse. So if that's the case, then, you know, the customer is always right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if that's what your goal is and that's what you're coming to see me for, we're going to work that out. Um, sometimes people don't come to see us with that particular goal, but in uh, having that f initial discussion, that initial intake, uh, you know, we determine, you know, we've been around a little while, so we can kind of determine, yeah, you know, it sounds like you're eating pretty well. There are definitely some things we might be able to moderate. Let's just kind of reset for a couple weeks, get some of those sort of more offending foods out, see how you feel. Um, and if that's the case, we kind of both agree that that's a good direction to go in. And then we can kind of talk about how severe or how, you know, easy <laughs> the <laughs> cleanse is and for how long that you feel like it's manageable for you to do that. So we've talked about foods, uh, some of the things that you should leave out of your diet. Uh, what else is involved? I, when I'll, whenever I think of cleanse, we've already spoken about drinking lots of water, uh, of course. Uh, why do I get this feeling? that I'm going to suddenly be hungry if I, if, I, if I go into a cleanse. Is that part of it? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but what you need to, I think, a really defining thing is to differentiate between whether or not you're physically hungry, so truly hungry, or if you're mentally, emotionally hungry. So that would be a craving. So often when we have a craving for something, it's not because we're actually hungry. So really trying to check in and differentiate between those two things. Um, is going to be really important on your cleanse because probably the bigger issue is not going to be you feeling physically hungry, but you being psychologically hungry. Okay. Kind of a weird concept. Yes, but, but <laughs> cravings for sugar are not because you have a sugar deficiency in your body. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's maybe one way of describing it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, now I'm getting a, a better feel. Okay, I've, uh, I'm going to do without certain foods. Uh, you're going to guide me along the way, though, in, in maybe what I can substitute in there or what I can... Uh, and maybe the cleanse is not just for that the duration of the cleanse. Are we talking about building new eating habits here in the process? Definitely. I think sometimes people, when they do a cleanse for a couple of weeks, say, uh, they feel really great. And they notice when they kind of start to add foods back in, they notice a connection between eating that food and feeling a certain way. So they might notice that if after they eat wheat, they get an upset stomach or something like that. So a lot of times long-term change does come from those short-term cleanse protocols because people adopt things that make them feel really good. We have heard terms uh, that have come up in the in, in all of this project. And, and, and this one just amazed me, and I had to look at the word twice, contradictions. Let's start with that. What what does that mean? Yeah, so w there are certain things that um, that we always consider when we're trying to sort of select people who are appropriate candidates for doing a, a cleanse. And a, a contraindication is, you know, basically, this is a reason that you should not be doing this. So we do have certain criteria or, or, or certain people who just generally, you know, it's not appropriate that they do a cleanse. Um, certainly, you know, pregnant women, um, you know, we're trying to really sort of build their bodies up, not necessarily try to, you know, sort of flush things out of them. Um, so that's one place where we would suggest, you know, maybe this is not the right time to do this. Let's let's sort of wait until a later date to do it. Um, you know, there's certainly people who have certain health conditions that don't make them great candidates because sometimes cleansing actually does, you know, create a temporary bit of stress on your system. Uh, so for people who have, you know, sort of liver diseases or kidney diseases sometimes aren't aren't the best candidates for doing a, a pretty intense cleanse. Now, I mean, we can tailor a cleanse to, to meet every single person's need. And so, you know, just because you have a health condition doesn't mean that, nope, you shouldn't do it for sure, but always do it under the guidance of a, of a healthcare practitioner, um, someone who can monitor you along the way, and someone who can also really, you know, be selective about how aggressive or, or how gentle we need to be. Let's talk about some of the effects of of, uh, of, of going
going through this process of cleansing the the inside uh, you cleanse the soul I think it a, a <laughs> bit at the same time if you're obviously starting to feel better what are some of the con common conditions uh, that are alleviated eliminated how do you in what way do you feel better after a cleanse some of the more common ways as a nutritionist some of the things that I definitely notice is that um, people feel like they've kind of curbed their vices so they have less cravings for those things like, you know, coffee, alcohol, sugars, those kinds of things. Often um, we can see a reduction in food sensitivities. So foods that were uh, problematic before the cleanse might not be as problematic afterwards. Um, and then, you know, energy, sleep, some of those kind of basic health, um, you know, yeah, those factors. Markers, yeah. yeah. Also, I mean, a lot of times, you know, we, we see people have improvements in their digestion, um, you know, allergies, even seasonal allergies can get better in a lot of ways. Um, certain skin conditions also seem to improve with going through a cleanse. Uh, so we can see this this sort of ripple effect into a lot of other systems. And a lot of people, when, when they do take out a few foods from their diet or they go through a cleansing process, oftentimes we'll, we'll even lose a little bit of weight along the way. Well, that is never a bad thing, especially if you're uh, trying to, in spring, get into, into some new clothes and so on. But I would think, I guess the, the obvious benefit is that if you have restricted a lot of things from your diet and you can go back, you could perhaps eat some of the things you couldn't eat before. But you're obviously not going to eat as much if you, when, you're, when you're done this cleanse or the detoxification. Is that right? Quantity for some people is going to be an issue. So maybe you were kind of overeating before. Um, but for other people, it's just, you know, a new way of eating. So, yeah, you might you might um, add some foods back into the diet. Obviously, we want to have, you know, as much variety as we can. But um, like I mentioned, sometimes those foods that, you know, they just kind of realize, I don't like how I feel when I eat those foods. So there often is a change in behavior afterwards. And, you know, th that those are things that, we as healthcare professionals can help determine um, after your cleanse how you how should you be eating now. So uh, to take uh, Dr. Pavlov's uh, uh, discoveries, and you know you open the door, you show dog food, and, he, and the dog salivates. Now, the dog says, "Ah, <laughs> but that food is not going to make him feel good." You can ingrain in the individual that not too much of this or not at all. Is that is that the the byproduct of that? Absolutely. And I think it, there's a general awareness that happens when, you know, you you change some things in your diet. Um, you do. You become a bit more acutely aware of the things that don't make you feel great. Uh, you know, you also get better ideas about, you know, your appetite and, and your blood sugar. So I think in general, it's um, it's something that you know, we're trying to help people make some, some long-term sustainable changes. Uh, and of course, you know, moderation is, is always really important for those things as well. All right, we'll talk a bit more about this uh, moderation, the spring cleanse for your body, if you will, detoxification on Boomer Life here on CIL 650. Our guest today from Integrative Naturopathic Medical Center in Vancouver, naturopathic physician Dr. Katie Leah, and Kirsten McEwen, registered holistic nutritionist. Lots more coming up. Remember, if you want more information about what we're talking today, you can go to Integrative. .ca. That's I-N-T-E-G-R-A-T-I-V-E dot C-A. This is George Gordon on CIL 650. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CIL 650.